All right. Hello, Fortinas, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is February 8th, 2022. And man, oh man, are we in for some exciting revelation today. We are going to build on this last video, which is the the, the three times, those three feasts unto the Lord. We showed which one was the pre-trib, which one was the mid-trib, and which one was the post-trib. Well, brothers and sisters, if it didn't quite sink in, and look at how low our numbers have gotten. This is three days for the revelation of pre-trib escape, of mid-trib rapture, and of the feet down return of the Lord. And it's got 1,900 views after three days. And you know why? That's because there are people out there who speak without seeking the word themselves, who condemn others with no understanding, only hearsay. And it has affected those who were watching because they choose to believe somebody because of the words that he used. I'm gonna show you those words, not from what this person said or what others may have said, but I'm gonna show you what the scripture says. All right. When we get going, I'm going to I'm going to open with that. Let me see where I wanted to go here with that. Yeah, I'm going to start with that because it's um, it's a piece of scripture that was recently brought to my attention at about the time that um, that this quote unquote pastor will call him was saying these things. And I find it fascinating because another person had shared a video from a pastor whose number was two, two, two just like me. And 222 has been the number all my life from when I was about 12, 13 years old. And I had no idea why. I just recognized it. And it, it just continued from there right to the point, as you guys know, that my son was born on 222. So he was born February 22nd. And um, so it, it's been a part of my life so much so from a little kid that I even recognized it. And so that's how this scripture that I'm going to share with you uh, came about. And as you, as I read it, you start to say, man, <laughs> there it is, you know, and it's all this connected. It, it's a, uh, it's the second book of this one, the second chapter, you know, in verse two, it's, it's so awesome, but you know, it, it's unfortunate because you would think that people that, that have been watching this ministry that have been seeking and understanding the revelations given in it, that can see the teachings for themselves. I, I don't show my face. I don't stand there in front of a podium and, and just talk for two hours. My face means nothing. I show you the word. I teach you how to see it and to understand it for yourself. And if that causes people to walk away because somebody says something, then they obviously didn't understand it in the first place. All right. I'm telling you guys what we are understanding. I was talking with Mark a little bit earlier this afternoon. I was talking with my wife. Guys, this is the revelation. You see, a lot of people, this is, this is a big issue. I mentioned this to Mark. This, was a, this is a big issue that people have. They can't believe it. Listen to what it says. Daniel 12, verse 4. But thou, Daniel, Shut up the uh, uh, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. I would say a program like this, Esort, so that we can get the word definitions from the Strongs and everything else, is one of those things that knowledge needed to increase. All right, things like the internet and so forth. But what did it say? Shut up the words and seal the book till the time of the end. That means that at some point towards in the time of the end, the books would be opened. Plain and simple. And that is what's happening in this ministry and has been happening for a little over four years now. But you know what's so fascinating? is the same people that read these scriptures and see and know and will tell you that these things are gonna happen, when it's presented to them, 
spit in your face and tell you it's not true. You see, it's it, it, it's like if it doesn't happen to them, it can't be. If I don't understand it, it must not be. But then refuse to even take the time to spend 30 minutes in at least one intro video. Just one intro video. Oh, my goodness. Things are going slow. Okay. In one intro video. Oh, give me a sec. Okay, see, in one, this is all we're asking. I'm not asking somebody to, <laughs> give me a second. <laughs> Man, the enemy is really trying to throw me for a loop. I was trying to get things started. Then I started, then I had to pause. I had to restart the internet. I had to, I had to, <laughs> a silly commercial. I don't even have commercials on my, on the ministry, but YouTube puts in commercials. I mean, my goodness, that's okay. I'm on track. I know exactly where I'm going. All right. <clears throat> so I'm not asking anybody to spend the next weekend or to spend hours of their life to go and see if, if this is making sense. I'm asking to start with 30 minutes of your life, 30 minutes of seeking diligently into scripture. This is what what is in this 30 minute video is in this printout that could be found in the description box as well 30 minutes to say what is he talking about the 14 years you see but you can't start in the 14 years you need to start with the revelation of who the gospels are speaking to when you begin just even begin to understand who Matthew, Mark, and Luke are speaking to, and you realize that in the end, it's reverse. It's Luke, Mark, and Matthew. Your perspective of understanding begins to shift, and all of these pieces of Scripture that you had questioned how they're spoken of so differently within the Gospels, and people have never been able to, to give you an answer as to why. It all begins to make sense. I mean, it all begins to make sense. And this is all we have ever, all I have ever asked of anybody to do is take the time to diligently seek a 30 minute video. And if that video begins to say, huh, seek it a little bit more, but then Come and watch the second 30-minute video and begin to understand that it was the revelation of who the Gospels are speaking to that gives us the understanding that it's not one set of seven years in the tribulation, but two sets of seven years. One is for Matthew. One is for Mark. And there's a small portion of time connected to a portion of Luke's group. This is why the discourses are so different. But if you take that half an hour and then start to see questions and have more questions and say, well, wait a second, then come and watch the second one. And by the time you finish the second one and you go into the study notes for the second one, you're going to say, oh, my goodness. And it will all begin to open up to you. You can go visit us at ministryrevealed.com. You can download the free PDF book of Ministry Revealed. You can go to Amazon and buy a hard a paperback if you want so that you can flip through and make notes and, and do what you want to do in there. And you'll find more details about these differences in the Gospels and more details on the 14 years. You will come to realize that what has caused all of this, you'll realize in the third video, this is a full-length video called The Differences in the Truth. You will come to realize that the reason it was all missed or that half of the story and change was missed is because everything we have been taught all of our lives in the entirety of the church has been from the perspective of the Gospel of Matthew. That is the reason for 
all of it. And in fact, the next video I plan on doing, God willing, after this video, is going to be one that's called, It's All Because of Matthew. It's going to be like a, an updated, complete, fuller version of the differences and the truth. It's going to go from, since this video was made, we're going to expand on it multiple times more and go all the way back to the beginning of Genesis, and we're going to take it right to the end of Revelation. And you're going to see that the reason for all of the debates in Scripture, the reason for all of seeing it this way compared to that way, the reason for all of it being seven years of tribulation and seeing 7,000 years, the reason it is all like that is because everybody has been taught to look at the Gospels, to look at the totality of Gospels from the perspective of Matthew. That is the reason for all of it. And when you see that next video, you are going to flip because it will answer, it will clarify, it will bring about questions that you say, oh my goodness, is that possible? Is that why this was this and that was that and here was saying that? It's going to blow you away. But for all the naysayers and everybody else out there, just pray. Pray to the Lord. Say, Lord, if I'm to understand this, if this is to be understood, show me the beginning of this understanding in this first intro video. And be diligent about seeking and listening to what's being said and your Bible understanding will explode. Your excitement, even if you're excited now seeking scripture, you will be 10 times more excited than you have ever been in your life because it will all begin to make much, much more sense. All of these things will be in their place and it will blow you away. It's fantastic. All right, so now let's get into the next portion. Now, as I said, the last video, well, actually, you know what? Before I do this, I wanted to, to talk about that other piece. This is this is a, a, a terrific piece of scripture and the timing of it is simply incredible. We talk a lot in Ministry Revealed over in the forum as well of two, 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 okay? It's been something in my life for, like I said, for a long, long time. I'm 49 years old, and 222 two, two has been a, been a big part of it since 12, 13 years old. Um, and it has for others. And this scripture came about from a pastor whose number was 222 two, two as well. And he's always known it to this. For me, I looked at Daniel 222, okay? That, that the Lord reveals to whom he chooses. That's also been connected to me, all right? But listen to 2 Timothy. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. What you have heard of me in my word, commit it to others who are faithful, who they themselves shall be able to teach others. Hello. 2.22. This is precisely what's going on, isn't it? Teaching you guys, you guys getting the understanding, you guys being able to reveal it and have these conversations with others. But oh my goodness, is it ever like pulling teeth, isn't it? That's, that's one of the biggest struggles that we have is how adamantly opposed people get from the slightest mention of saying, look at these gospels and what they're saying, this it's speaking to different people. Or to say that, you ever wonder how it's seven years and everything would fit in when all the weapons in Ezekiel 39 are being burned for seven years? They will fight you tooth and nail, and all we're trying to do is have a conversation with them about scripture. Isn't it, or don't we have the same spirit? 
Isn't the same spirit of the living God within us who believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, who died for our sins, resurrected on the third day? Do we not have that same spirit in us? Don't they want to have a conversation about the word of God? Or is pride blocking their ability to see more? In many cases, not all, but in many, many cases, it's pride. Because they can't understand how the revelation of Daniel chapter 12 verse 4 has been coming about and they don't know it. It's not public. It's not in the churches. It's not everywhere. It's So they won't believe it. They won't even take the time to seek it. You see, brothers and sisters, it is for those who are diligently seeking, those who are a part of his bride, but not only, but for, I can't explain how it's not reaching others who we would think are of the same spirit. That they would just off the cuff rebuke it all without even looking. Let's, let's, let me finish up with some more of this. Okay, the same shall commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, <laughs> not as another soldier for Christ who is rebuking without understanding. Hello, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is, not, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully? The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say. And the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Wow. Wow. Guys, don't listen to others who haven't taken the time to understand. Don't allow people to, to steal your revelation, to steal your understanding, to steal the joy and the excitement of it all because they refuse to even look terrible i don't know what kind of price is going to be paid for that i have no idea but for every word uttered there will be a price one way or the other all right now watch this in the in the last video we we were speaking about the feasts of the lord right there are three feasts of the Lord, right? The one is Passover for unleavened bread. This is what we were talking in the last one, that the revelation of the three feasts of the year that they were to go to the Lord, right? When they were to go up to the Lord three times in a year, we revealed that the first one, the escape of the bride of Christ, the pre-trib escape is at the time of the Feast of Weeks. We showed that the rapture group even though six years comes to an end and it's late summer into fall, they don't they they see the Lord coming at the end of the sixth seal, but they don't get brought in until about six months later, which is the great multitude rapture at Passover. Okay, so you see, there's there's also others out there right now saying don't listen to anybody else because we have the revelation. And the Lord told us it's rapture at Passover. First of all, you'll never hear that here. Remember that. You're never going to hear the Lord said. Okay. I am led by the spirit and I'm given understanding through reading and seeking and searching, but I am never told nothing. No, Lord never told me anything. No visions, none of that stuff. Okay. But now here's the thing is the rapture at Passover. Yes, <laughs> but not the pre-trib. The mid-trib great multitude is at Passover. And then we showed how, of course, when the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives, 
it's at the final feast the feast of tabernacles so you got the three great feasts of the lord when they're to go up to the lord revealed in the pre mid and post that was the revelation of this last video now we're going to build on it even more and when you see the proof of it you are going to be floored what happened is for anybody that wants to join us uh you can go to the link right here to ministryrevealed.com see ministryrevealed.com you can go to the link right here or just type it up and go to it and in the menu box in the top right you can join us in the forum everything there is free the join the forum for free uh, uh um the all the charts all the graphs everything's for free all the videos one click download everything's simple and free our brother jimmy has done a fantastic job with that and has made it so easy for everybody to get it all right now within that we have this forum and we've got over 900 people in there and all sorts of things are being shared well our sister rebecca king i've been talking about this about this um uh, 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 th this revelation, and we've been talking about the 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 Feast of Weeks and the eighth day from the Feast of Weeks. So the beginning of the 50-day count after the Feast of Weeks, okay, after the seven Sabbaths, then shall you number, count 50 more days. So the bride will either go on day one or the bride will go on circumcision day at the eighth day, all right? We've been talking about that now for a little while, for a couple of three months or whatever. And here's the thing. A lot of people don't want to wait till June. We want to see anybody who's going to tell us something sooner. And so our sister Rebecca was looking to, to say, no, it's got to be Passover. It's going to be connected to Passover. I know it's connected to Passover. And in this last video, I shared how when the Lord came, he did not come for the bridegroom. He did not come for those with the spirit in them. He didn't come for the Gentile bride. Right? He didn't come for Leah like Jacob. He came for Rachel. He came for the house of Israel, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He didn't come for the house of Judah. Okay? Didn't come for the Gentiles, didn't come for the house of Judah. Came for the house of Israel. And so when did does it does it not mean that he saved the whole world? Yes. And we still all have to come to him through the blood and through what he did for us on the cross. Absolutely. There's no other way. But when he was here and when he came and did what he did, he says, I do this for the house of Israel, for the lost sheep of the house of Israel were his exact words. That's very specific. There's three groups and that was one of them. So when he did what he did at Passover, it would make sense that that group who he did it for will join him as well at Passover. And you say, well, isn't that the bride of Christ? No. You see, when Christ come, he didn't come for those who were already ready. He came to save the lost. So it's just like the bride, when the bride is removed, is he coming to save the bride who is ready? No. The bride is being removed because what's coming is everything that can be thrown at the house of Israel who is still asleep. Everything is going to get thrown at them out of love to wake them up. That's why at the great multitude rapture, they will be gathered to him at, in paradise on Mount Zion. This is what we were talking about in the last video. And it's fantastic because what ended up happening, our sister Rebecca King was watching a video from the parable of the, from parable of the vineyard, our brother Adam, and <laughs> she was watching and studying all sorts of things to be able to prove that it wasn't going to be the Feast of Weeks, but that it was going to be at Passover. And she came across Adam's video after having watched and seeing the confirmation being taught in the last video here. And when she saw Adam's video, 
who didn't understand fully what he was saying because he doesn't understand the 14. He doesn't understand the different groups of pre, mid, and post. But he showed a piece of scripture. And when Rebecca saw it, she shared it in the forum. And she knew, she said at that moment, that the pre-trib, like a rapture, or the pre-trib escape, as we call it, of the bride of Christ, was not going to be at Passover, but was in fact going to be at the Feast of Weeks. And that's what we're going to get into. That's going to be one of the pieces, along with Jacob, with more detail, that is going to floor you guys. Anybody that wants to say the pre-trib is at Passover, the pre-trib is at the tabernacles, or whatever you want to say from here on forth forward, you're just not listening. You're just not tuning in your ears to what's being said. Because outside of everything we've brought about to show this revelation now, knowing that the answer is 50 days, 14 years, and the 50th Jubilee, you are going to see on top of all of that, you are going to witness that the scripture itself literally said exactly when the great multitude rapture will take place. What? I told you, you're going to want to sit down for it. And then, like I said, as we build on it, I said we're going to talk about uh, uh, Jacob and his wives. Because when the live show we did a day or two ago with uh, Mike and those guys, uh, just a group of us, right? Over on, uh, and with Amish, I haven't seen Amish in a long time. That was great. Over on 165, uh, Interrupts 165, uh, and Colleen's beautiful little baby girl. We were having fun because uh, Colleen, it's her fifth child, her and Tony. And uh, it's so awesome. She was, I think she's maybe like five days old now. And uh, it's so awesome because we were teasing because they're working on their part for the 8 billion, right? <laughs> that that 8 billion is going to be reached and bam, time to go. So they're doing their part. Love it. So when the video was done, though, when the live show was done and we were still chatting a bit afterwards, I had a poof, I had this revelation. And it was about something I had shared in this last video that dawned on me. And I said, oh, my goodness. Yet again, the proof that, yes, indeed, the escape pre-trib is connected to the Feast of Weeks. It's going to blow you guys all the way. All right? So let's get to this next portion. All right. This is what we were talking about in Deuteronomy. This is just, this first piece here with Deuteronomy is just a little side note. Again, I was talking with our brother uh, uh, Mark just a little while ago before starting, and as we were having this conversation, this dawned on me as we were talking. Check this out, okay? This we spoke about this in the previous video because this Deuteronomy 16 are the three feasts in which they were to go up to the Lord, okay? Three times in a year they're to go up to the Lord. What is it? The feast of unleavened bread, the feast of weeks, and the feast of tabernacles. Well, guess what? <laughs> the seals for the for the seven years of seals at the mid-trib rapture, right? In the seventh year of the great multitude, we've been saying is connected to Passover. We've been showing it's Passover. And what is it? Seven years, right? Well, we know that seven years and a lot of things in scripture, the years are as days. You're going to see that later on with something else as well. The years are as days, right? Or days can be as years. How long is Passover week? How long is the Feast of Unleavened Bread to go up to the Lord? How many days? Seven days like seven years, correct? Um, the Feast of Weeks. How many days is the Feast of Weeks? It's only one. It's only one. Seven Sabbaths and the morrow after, which is the beginning of the 50 days, on the morrow after is a tribute of the free will offering out of thy hand. And then what is the Feast of Tabernacles? Seven days. Seven days. Seven days. And, and how, long is, how long is the trumpets portion? How long is, is the portion for when the Lord returns feet down? He returns what? At the beginning of the what? Seventh year. And it's what? Seven days. Seals is what? Seven days. 
and it's for the rapture group of Passover, and it's or seven years, and it's what? Seven days. The escape group, which is what? The beginning, which is the Feast of Weeks, that means in the beginning as well. And what is it? <laughs> Come on. Guys, it's right here. It's revealed in the simplest form in the three feasts to go up to the Lord. This is just awesome. This was just like a couple hours ago, man. Just an awesome little tidbit nugget right for us there to start everything off. Now, let me show you guys something else. We haven't uh, spoken on Ezekiel 21 in a little while. So we're going to build on all of this, okay? Remember when we've shared Ezekiel 21, okay? Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 21. Ezekiel chapter 21 was important because this is when the Son of Man, remember, when the bride is gone at that eighth day, and it all begins, the door shut and the 40 days begin, the Son of Man will be here. We've got a video in the intro series that talks about the 40 days of the Son of Man as well. Okay, it's an intro video about it. The Muslims know somebody is coming for 40 days. They call him the Antichrist. The Christians are going to be confused by it that are remaining, the sleeping church, and they're going to think he's the Antichrist, which is why in Luke 17, Christ said that, um, that at that time when it comes to that generation, right, he must first be rejected and suffer many things because they're not going to recognize who he is. They're not going to realize that it's the Son of Man. He's coming to warn as Jonah did. That was that reference. And so this in Ezekiel, is the typology of the Son of Man who is going to be here for 40 days. And what's he to do? Set thy face toward Jerusalem and drop thy word toward the holy places and prophesy against the land of Israel. So he's telling them what? A sword is coming. Okay? He's telling them a sword is coming that all flesh may know that I, the Lord, have drawn forth my sword out of his sheath. So he's to warn that the father is taking out what? If this is the father's sword, this is a great sword, right? This is the time of the red horse rider. He's saying, get ready. Christ, the son of man, is going to be here warning the people. Signs and wonders. And he's going to be warning and some will flee. Remember, this is Luke chapter 21, right? It's Ezekiel 21, but it's the reference of Luke chapter 21. It's that before the 14 years begin is Luke's discourse. It's that 40 to 50 day period of time before the 14 years begin. And we've talked about this in the past. And you see, it's like uh, Ezekiel chapter 21 is where we are, you see? We're in 2021, 2022, from about a fall to fall. So technically, you can say that it's because it started in 2021, we're in the year 2021. So when we look at this in Ezekiel 21, we're still in it. Because this is the portion right near the end before it ends where the Son of Man shows up. And it's all about him brandishing a sword. Okay, Son of Man, prophesy and say, thus saith the Lord. Say, a sword, a sword is sharpened and furbished. It is sharpened to make, so, to make a sore slaughter. Whoa. Okay. Verse 11. And he, and he hath given it to be furbished that it may be handled. This sword is sharpened and it is furbished to give it into the hand of the slayer. The slayer. Okay. This is this is the reference directly to the Son of Man when he's here for 40 days that I believe will begin in June. All right. In mid is June. Now listen to this. Verse 17 of Ezekiel 21. I will also smite mine hands together and I will cause my fury to rest. I, the Lord, have said it. The word of the Lord came to me again, saying, Also thou, son of man, appoint thee two ways, that the sword of the king of Babylon 
may come okay this that the sword of the king of babylon may come does this sound familiar remember that second chronicles 36 we've talked about it many times okay the drought from the king of chaldees slew their young men with the sword and all these things that was done by the king of babylon okay break down their wall burnt the palaces thereof destroyed with fire and them that had escaped from the sword carried away into babylon until the reign of the kingdom of persia now we know this this is a reference to something that took decades even a couple hundred years or so to happen to bring about to the kingdom of persia but what do we know we know in the revelation of the end of days what was thousands of years what was thousands of years will take place over approximately 14 years that is 2500 and about 2000 years of history of was and is all packed in to 14 years that's how crazy fast and condensed it's going to be and what do we see babylon destroys them okay that's the first attack and what do we see it might even very well be guys that that the the babylon referenced in this case here is the typology of iran okay that it will be a brief middle east attack and jerusalem with limited nuclear uh, uh, bombs will be brought upon jerusalem it will be a short-lived war remember we understand this from the video in 2010 that this is all part of the plan all right we know it'll be short-lived and then what's going to happen we know that the kingdom of persia we know that this cyrus type of person is going to stand up and declare in in a proclamation in a decree to settle things down and then we know there's going to be another attack and jerusalem will be removed from the land the jews israel they'll be removed from the land for the next seven years of seals while the house of israel while the world who is the house of israel all grafted in with gentiles throughout the world while they will experience this final portion of time of the seven years of seals for the sleeping church it'll be all their time to wake up and jerusalem will rest so that the defilement for the seven for the seven times seven that they never allowed it to rest it will now take its rest so that when the lord returns at the end of seals when trumpet starts they will be able to rebuild the city and the streets and the temple okay so we see this sword we see babylon we see that he breaks through and carries away prisoners okay let's go back to ezekiel 21 verse 19. see the son of man is here it's the son of man that's told by the father okay that he says appoint thee two ways that the sword of the king of babylon may come both twain shall come forth out of one land and choose thou a place choose it at the head of the city appoint a way that the sword may come to rabbah of the amorites and to judah in jerusalem the defensed for the king of babylon stood at the parting of the way at the head of the two ways to use divination to make his arrows bright he consulted the images he looked in the liver at his right hand was uh, was the divination for jerusalem to appoint captives to open the mouth in the slaughter there it is see to open the mouth in the slaughter to lift up the voice of the, with shouting to appoint battering rams to appoint battering rams against the gates to cast a mount and to build a fort so this one is against jerusalem for casting a mount a mount against and building a fort because why they're surrounding it well isn't that interesting this is what we see right here this is what comes in in luke chapter 21 when it says and when you shall see jerusalem compassed with armies when have we been teaching this is this is when the son of man is here for 40 days 
he is warning Jerusalem as he as Jonah was a warning for 40 days, so shall the Son of Man be. It was a prophecy. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is near. What does it say? Compassed with armies. Let them which are in Judea flee out and depart into the mountains, for these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. You see? The exact same story from Ezekiel. And it's before what? It's before the sword. So once again, I, I shared it in, uh, in a comment somebody had asked in the forum, but I believe I've spoken about, well, I know I spoke about it recently as well. You see, where is the sword? The second seal. The second seal. Peace is removed from the earth. And a great sword is given to them. This is the sword of the Lord. The one that he's furbished, that he's ready to give to the slayer so that they can what? Kill one another. The Lord gave it. The Lord God made that so. It sounds crazy to, to imagine, but of course he's in control of everything. He's not doing it out of hatred. He's doing it out of love so that the house of Israel will wake up which is the world. This is that sword. So if this is what the Son of Man is warning is about to come, then who is the Son of Man but the white horse rider who is the one coming to war? You see, we were proving that the whole way through uh, a couple of videos ago as well. So now look at what we see. Cast them out. This, all this stuff is related to Luke chapter 21 and the 40 days of the Son of Man. Now listen to this. Ezekiel 21, verse 23. And it shall be unto them a false divination in their sight to them that have sworn oaths, but will call, but he will call to remembrance the iniquity that they may be taken what so even though the enemy has done it with divination with false divination the lord will allow what they're what they're doing in this false divination to still occur because he will call to remembrance the iniquity that they may be taken whose iniquity that they may be taken Judah's, Judah's iniquity that they may be taken. Remember, here it is, the exact same place. How many times do we have to be able to show this, right? In the exact same place that we've been teaching, this portion right here relates to this 40, 50 days and then Jerusalem being attacked. And then what? The decree to restore, the commandment to restore by whoever this modern day Cyrus will be. And we know that it won't get restored for seven years. Okay, that's why it then goes like we were talking about in the live show. That's why it then is seven weeks as years will pass before the rebuilding starts. But listen to what it says. How is this connected to what I'm saying? Over there in Ezekiel chapter 21, it says, uh, 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 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity. To make reconciliation for iniquity. What was 21 just saying? But he will call to remembrance the iniquity that they may be taken. What happens at this iniquity that he's going to remember? They're going to be taken. Some will be taken captive and some will be fleeing into the wilderness. All, every single part, every single piece of this chapter is connected to this 50-day portion to the beginning of the tribulation of the seven and seven. Listen to what it says next. Um, let me go down. Uh, well, right at the end is awesome. Let me show you this one too. Verse Ezekiel 21, verse 27. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it. And it shall be no more. Listen to this. <laughs> this is such an awesome chapter. <laughs> I will overturn, overturn, overturn it. 
and it shall be no more until he come whose right it is and i will give it him hello when does this happen it's the end of seals see it's going to be removed and it's going to be no more until the lord comes until christ comes and he is over it and that's when the city and the streets and the rebuilding takes place listen to this let's go to the final verse uh where do i want to see it let me make sure i'm looking at the right thing here is it this one there i remember if it's spoken it i just want to make sure i'm looking at what i wanted to look at i think so oh no no that's gonna be jeremiah 4. <laughs> that's gonna be so awesome all right uh but let's have a look at it verse 32 uh thou shall be for fuel to the fire thy blood shall be in the midst of the land Thou shalt be no more remembered, for the Lord hath spoken it. Okay, we know this destruction. This is now the destruction that's going to take place. The sword that was brandished is now going to be used when? After the 50 days are gone. Remember, the red horse rider, at the red horse rider, peace is removed from the earth. The red horse rider is the beginning of Mark's discourse. When it's nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom will begin. Remember John's uh, uh, Luke's discourse. Luke's discourse was it said, then he said unto them, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. But then in verse 12, he said, but before all these, which tells us it's the white horse rider time. It tells us it's the period of time that 40 to 50 day portion before the red horse rider and the 14 years, the seven and seven in tribulation begin. So what we were able to see here is just in ezekiel alone we could see that it's the son of man even ezekiel he is the typology of the son of man he's called the son of man the sword the brandishing of the sword the reason why who's going to attack who who allowed them to come in to attack the whole nine yards is there just as we've shown it and 21 is connected because it's still going to be the technical 2021 watch this now look what happens when we go to Jeremiah. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 4. Give me one sec. I'm just uh I'm gaining my All right, all right, all right. Let me just make sure I want to I want to be sure I'm remembering. I want to catch what I wanted to catch. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Now we're back in Jeremiah chapter 4. Or now we're coming to Jeremiah chapter 4. We've shared here in Jeremiah chapter 4 as well that this is the beginning of tribulation. Okay? The, or the, that 40 day portion as well. That 40 to the 50 and then the beginning of tribulation. We've shared this before back here. We haven't spoken about it in a little while. That it says, uh, Publish in Judah and Jerusalem, verse 7. Uh, let's start in verse 6. Jeremiah 4, verse 6. Set up the standard toward Zion. Retire, stay not, for I will bring evil from the north and a great destruction. The lion is come up from his thicket and the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. Okay? One is attacking Jerusalem, Israel. The other one is going to be when World War III breaks out. He is gone forth from his place to make thy land desolate, and thy cities shall be laid waste without an inhabitant. We see in verse 10, Then said I, Ah, Lord God, surely thou hast greatly deceived this people and Jerusalem, saying you shall have peace, whereas the sword reacheth the soul. Why? What's this about? This is because this modern day Cyrus, who is going to declare this, you know, ending of this attack that was devastating in the Middle East, it will be a short lived attack. But when this declaration or when this ceasing, this, this proclamation is made, this peace, you could say, is declared, it won't be a peace. They think it will because they think, you see, the Jews only think seven years as well. 
they think that what's coming next as we've been sharing is only a seven year period which means they're expecting the temple to get built right away so even in this devastation they're going to think that they're the ones being victorious and the temple is about to be built so they they they're it's almost like a willingness to accept this attack so that we can bring about peace but it's false it will not last that's what all this is about and then it says from verse 15 for a voice declareth from dan remember we said one of the worker groups is the tribe of dan and the other one is what ephraim the two that are missing in the 144 at the end of seals that are the that are the workers for trumpets so a voice declares from dan and publishes affliction from mount ephraim make ye mention to the nations behold publish against jerusalem that watchers from a far country uh, watchers come from a far country and give out their voice against the cities of Judah. As keepers of a field, they are against her round about because she hath been rebellious against me, says the Lord. Verse 19, my bowels, my bowels, I am pained at my heart. My very, my heart maketh a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace because thou hast heard, O my soul, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war there it is again destruction upon destruction the whole land is spoiled suddenly are my tents spoiled and my curtains in a moment you see suddenly destroyed in a moment that is limited nukes that are going to take place all right and then it says how long shall i see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet uh let's go down to verse 26 I held, I beheld and lo, the fruit, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. For thus saith the Lord, the whole land is desolate, yet I will not make a full end. Okay, why? Well, because it's his land. They're going to be brought back in time, right? The heavens are black. Now let's go to this. This is going to be a perfect connection to what we're going to see in a little bit. It ends in Jeremiah chapter, Jeremiah 4, verse 31. For I have heard a voice as of a woman in travail, and the anguish of her that bringeth forth her first child, the voice of the daughter of Zion, okay, the voice of the daughter of Zion, that bewails herself that spreadeth her hands saying woe is me now for my soul is wearied because of murders who do you think this represents it's the house of israel okay it's the house of israel it's judah so so judah has been removed from the land and the house of Israel sees all of this, the world's going to see it. Because it will begin in God's house in Judah, and then it will be World War III that will follow and bring de devastation throughout the world. And what does the daughter of Zion say? But she's bewailing, spreading her hands, knowing that war is about to follow. World War III is about to follow. And look at what she says. Woe is me now this could not have been judah saying woe is me now because judah was the one already made desolate it is the world the daughter the house of israel who is the one saying woe is me now because it's coming i want you to remember this last verse because as we go forward to this incredible revelation, a, a piece that I had spoken about three years ago, in what, uh, in what was brought back to my attention through uh, uh, Rebecca King, is a piece that I covered three years ago. But because it's not in the King James Version, I forgot about it. Okay? You're going to see it on full display, fully revealed, exactly as it was revealed in the last video before I had realized it was even there. 
And when you see it, you're going to be floored. And the conversation connected to it is the exact conversation of Jeremiah 4, verse 31, when it was them, this group here, in verse 31, who was saying, woe is me now. So Judah has been removed. They have fled. They're in captivity. And then the world, the house of Israel, says, woe is me now, because they know World War III is coming. What do we know about this group? We know this is going to be the rapture group. So it's woe is them now because now it's their time of tribulation. But when it's over the portion of seals, they're the ones brought back first. This is the rapture group. And you're going to see it yet again today. All right. So now let's go to the to where we are now. Okay. Of course, we all know where we are now. We're right around in here. What are we? The 7th, 8th, 8th. We're Tuesday. So we're the 8th of February right now. What I'm sharing with everybody, what the scriptures have revealed to us is that the Feast of Weeks, you see, the church, Judah, right? The Jews will tell you this is Shavuot. Shavuot is also called the Feast of Weeks. They call it Feast of Weeks, right? The scriptures call it Feast of Weeks. They also call it Shavuot. And the church calls it Pentecost. And Jews would say, yeah, it's Pentecost. See, this is the this is the seventh Sabbath, and this is Shavuot. Well, we know that that's not the proper way of counting. Because their days, they count their days. Do you understand, guys? They count their days. You see, their Hebrew month days. They count them based on the moon. Right? The moon establishes the month. So, if it's seven Sabbaths, and you count from the first day of the year, for Nisan, then that means the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th are the Sabbath days. You see, these are the Sabbath days. And when you understand how to properly count that and know that they don't properly do it, they just go every Saturday to make their life easier. And so be it. It's not a, it's not a sin according to the New Testament, but you're to observe a day every week. You are to not work seven days a week and you're to observe a day with the Lord. Yes, but it doesn't matter which day you do it. But if you want to properly count and understand where the Lord is doing these things, then it would really help to know exactly when he's talking about. Okay. And what you come to realize is the 15th of Savan is the Feast of Weeks. Okay. Is the seventh, I should say, is the seventh Sabbath. So we know that Le Leviticus 23 on the Feast of Weeks, it says seven Sabbaths shall you number, okay, from, uh, from uh, unleavened bread. So seven Sabbaths shall you number. When you number seven Sabbaths from the end, the end of unleavened bread, you get the true count, which is from evening to evening, the 15th of Sivan. Sivan, we have showed you, is taurus when you follow not just the cycle of the sun but with the moon to understand what month you're in as the jewish calendar does for us the third month the month of savan is taurus and brothers and sisters taurus is called the beginning taurus it is the head of taurus we've shown it many times taurus has one eye that's 50 and the other eye that means 70 and the 50 means 14 because it's the 14th letter of the hebrew alphabet and here we are this date right here is going to be the end of 70 years so 70 is one eye and the beginning of 50 days which is the morrow after the seventh sabbath and this is the 50. so in taurus You've got 70 and 50. This was that pendant we showed, right? From the Shroud of Turin. The Shroud of Turin has been proven factual. It is from Christ. It is from the Son of Man. That is from his death and resurrection. No other imprint could have done this except that flash of light. Okay? 
you can go see and study this if you want closer but the technology that they've done if you guys remember the technology that exists now they found this pendant on a string around his neck and this pendant as you guys will remember cute little lamb was this this is what the pendant read ayin aleph noon okay to the jews they go from right to left so ayin is 70. aleph is the beginning christ remember he is the beginning in the beginning so it's 70 beginning noon which is the 14th hebrew letter of the e of the of the hebrew alphabet which means 50 and the brightest uh, the 14th brightest star in the sky which is called the bull's eye is noon so what do you have you have in taurus 70 50. this was on jesus's pendant for crying out loud do you understand what i'm saying it was his pendant that revealed when 70 ends in taurus 50 begins what <laughs> <laughs> that one freaked me out when we saw that one, man. Oh, it was so exciting. You see how many exciting moments you have here? It's just incredible. Well, now we're going to share a little bit more detail on this and, and build it up even more because you'll remember this is connected to Exodus 34. And there's a reason why I'm rehashing this with you guys in this portion. Okay. In Exodus 34:22. I'm going to show you guys some greater detail about um, about Enoch, which again, the piece of of, of uh, the website that I'm going to share with you is a website that I shared probably close to three years ago as well. You see, but when these things come and go back in those days, what were we doing? We didn't have the detail we have now, not even close. We got from the beginning of the book to the end of the book now, being opened and understanding. Everything separated and not in one spot, but in three revelations open to us. And all of these books confirming it the whole way through. And so what we were doing back then is we were still thinking, well, maybe Passover, maybe maybe the end of Feast of Weeks, uh, maybe the beginning, uh, maybe a, a, a Pentecost because it was the same. Or is it the same? It wasn't the same. Now we know it's two separate things. It's connected, but they're separate. What else did we have? Uh, oh, maybe it was that pentacle. Maybe it was the trumpets. Maybe it, it, it. we don't do that anymore. We knew that there were only two places left for a 50 day count for these events to take place within it. And now we know there is one because the revelation has shown that it is the three times going up to the Lord Feast of Weeks first, Passover second, Tabernacles is third. So now when we came back and we were looking at what we've been teaching here for a couple of years is the escape group right here is that in in Exodus 34 22 it says and thou shall observe the feast of weeks of the first fruits of the wheat harvest well when do you observe the feast of weeks this is the feast of weeks this is the seventh sabbath and it says from the morrow after so this is day one of 50 this is when that new meat offering is brought in okay that's when the new meat offering is brought in but it doesn't say you it, listen to what it says thou shall observe the feast of weeks of the first fruits of the wheat harvest which is on the 16th of savan day one of the 50 that comes next it says you're going to observe that comma and the feast of in gathering so two groups connected to this observance that is going to be observed at the year's end okay the year's end the course the circuit of the sun but we shared how look at this word this word for the feast of ingathering is the word 614 we shared this right so 614 and look at what year or look at the date this year june 14th 614 but this is the year's end then it's what day one two three four five six seven whoops seven eight okay from here to here evening to evening this is 
the beginning of the circuit of the sun and it is also june so the sixth month 22nd day this year do you realize it doesn't fall on this date on these exact dates given in scripture to the word definitions only this year does it do it so 622 is the eighth day when the bride who is probably being gathered or something is taking place from day one but it says not observed until the eighth day okay is not observed until what the year's end so this in gathering in the feast of, of weeks the first fruit of the feast of weeks of the wheat harvest they will be observed at the year's end and this in gathering feast used only twice look at what it says it comes from what we've recently shared right 622 which means to receive to take away that is to remove so 622 is to take away and to remove we shared how important that is because this would be the eighth day the circumcision of the flesh so if for example john is born at the feast of weeks on the morrow after okay and the circumcision of his flesh would have been on the eighth day or how about enoch it's believed enoch was born at the feast of weeks i'm going to show you and if he had a circumcision when the lord took him or the the circumcision typology at his birth right on the eighth day it was 622. are you ready for this all of these things guys are connected to exactly the period of time we're talking about right now in june but when so it's the feast of weeks and this feast of in gathering but they're not to be observed until the year's end what's the year's end it's the circuit of the sun the circuit of the sun this right here is the what the beginning of the circuit of the sun there's day one because why this is the solstice it's the height of the sun it is the peak of the sun it is the circuit of the sun and from that point forward it now starts to diminish just like john the baptist had to diminish okay so 622 watch this again we recently shared this portion that enoch listen to this so adam was enoch's great 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 grandfather he was the seventh generation from adam enoch was born 622 years after quote unquote creation okay meaning from adam <laughs> we know the real creation right so from adam so he was born in year 622 from adam now we know we can find that everywhere what's 622 june 22nd so in the year that equaled his creation uh, uh, sorry his birth is the day that equals the escape and the circumcision of the flesh listen to this you want to prove it even a little bit better watch this he goes on to say in this article uh, in this writing i want to talk about a man called enoch who lived on the earth 365 years okay we all know that from genesis 5 listen to this that is one year for every day of the year that's exactly what we've been saying as well it's the typology of years being as days and days being as years hello you've heard that over and over and over again in this ministry and i told you to remember that one of the things from earlier because days can be as years and years can be seen as days okay so what do you think the 365 years as days is referenced to well 365 days is a solar year and enoch who was born in 622 and was born and then taken by the father in a circuit of the sun connection from the time of his birth which from his birth he was taken at the same with his from the lord so he was taken what it's as if saying 365 days later 
from his birth he was taken so if he was if he was born in 622 june 22nd and it's the circuit of the sun <laughs> hello hello <laughs> Only this year, brothers and sisters, only this year does all of this connect. Now watch this. This article is the one I was mentioning that I shared this article probably three years ago as well. You see, I have this little blue star up here. It's saved. I, I have hundreds of them, so I don't go looking through them very often. And in fact, I didn't even go looking for this one. I had completely forgotten about it. It wasn't until I just did Enoch birthday 622 and... I was looking through some of the links and I came across this one and realized it was one that I had already marked. Listen to what it says. Shavuot, day of Enoch's birth and holy rapture to the heavens. Hello. So others who have done much more extensive studies on Enoch and genealogies and histories and all of those things even shows us that Enoch was taken at the time of Pentecost the morrow after, okay? So they tell us, you gotta remember, what did he say? They're saying the six of Savan. Well, the church says it's only a 50 day count and Judah, right? The Jews say it's only a 50 day count. Do you know what else they tell you? Do you know what else they tell you that they're wrong about? They tell you that Matthew, Mark and Luke are all the same. We know that's not true, right? We've proven that here hands down without even question now it is an absolute truth matthew mark and luke do not all speak to the same people you want to know what else they've all agreed on the church and judah like they've agreed on this 50. they've also agreed that creation was only set is only a total of seven thousand years why because just like the church who packed all the gospels together because they read from a foundation of matthew the foundation of Matthew was written to who? To the Jews. So the church has been given their foundation and basing all of their foundation from the book of Matthew, which is the book written to the Jews, not understanding who Mark and who Luke are speaking to in the Synoptic Gospels. And so they fall in line with what the Jews are saying. And they only see now seven years because they only see what? 7,000 years. So they fall in line with what the Jews are saying. For the Jews, it would appear to make sense because theirs is only 7,000 years. But they don't recognize the portions before it in the understanding because everything is seen as one set of seven. What's the end of days? It's seen as one set of seven. What are the Gospels, the Synoptic Gospels? They're seeing as one set of group, one set of people. We have separated them and revealed the truth of all of those points. And many people throughout the world and throughout the ages have seen points of them here and there. Okay, many people or a number of people have seen that it was seven Sabbaths and then counting 50 days and have believed it for a long time. But they're always a small group. You know, there are others who knew that there was this gap creation in the beginning, but then jumbled all the rest of it together in the 7,000. So they're seeing parts and pieces and know for hundreds of years there's a fringe group here and a fringe group here and a fringe group there and they've got pieces and parts all over the place. We have been given the open book, guys. Does it mean we know all of it? Of course not. Don't be silly. But we have been given the open book. We've been able to separate them all. To see all three groups in their portions. And they are Luke, Mark, and Matthew all the way back from creation. It's fantastic. And this is no different. This is a lazy count of 50 days, which is incorrect. As we said, it's the seventh Sabbath. And then begin to count 50 days. So this is where they would say that Enoch was born. This is the, the time frame where we would say that John the Baptist was born. This is that time frame where we believe it's the, it's the celebration of the Lord from our little sister, or our sister's dream, right? That they went to Jesus and asked Jesus, why weren't we leaving yet? 
and because it was a, it was God's birthday, she said, and it was all confusing to her because it was God's birthday and it was Jesus that told them. Okay, so obviously God doesn't have a birth, but it's the original covenant that he made with man. And it was done at the Feast of Weeks. Do you understand? How are you going to get a feast unto the Lord on the sixth day, meaning nothing? It's all connected to the moon cycles, guys. All right? Yes, it's solar. It's lunar. It's the stars. The stars is telling us it's in the beginning. It's in Taurus. It's the, it's the, it's the, um, it's the moon that lets us know the proper circuit of the moon to understand when the months start and how to understand the true Sabbaths and where the Lord's feasts are. Not over here on some random sixth day, completely anonymous. But what happened? Wouldn't there be a typology that, that when Enoch was taken, it's like a circumcision? Right? It's the removing of the flesh. Well, that would be the eighth day. How about John the Baptist? John the Baptist was the eighth day when his dad made that declaration and could finally speak. Okay? What, what else do we know? Well, we know from this point that it was the circuit of the sun. We saw in Leviticus that this is the Feast of Weeks. This is when you bring in the offering, but that you, it's not going to be observed until the year's end. You see? Guys, it's everywhere. We've understood. Our brother Enoch is connected to Shavuot. You see, this person obviously didn't know it either. Shavuot, Feast of Weeks, Pentecost. They're not all the same. This is seven times, seven, uh, seven Sabbaths, and then count 50 days. All right? So, of course, we've shared these things. We've talked about these things recently. But... To bring this portion in, what else do we know? The circuit of the sun. In the circuit of the sun, I mean, it literally tells us finished circuit of the sun. So if the end of the circuit of the sun is here, and this is the beginning of the circuit of the sun, this is the year's end. Do you understand? I, I wanted to sink in that... No other place or in no other year in, in I don't know how many, for, how many back or how many future do we have 614 to 622 give us our Feast of Weeks counts to the circuit of the sun. Literally the circuit of the sun as the scripture said. It's craziness. It's perfection. You remember this one? It's connected to Psalms 19. Psalms 19. How did we come to understand Psalms 19? Watch this. Okay, let's go to Psalms 19. Psalms 19, we've been teaching now for a long time that 18 and 118 are the events that are going to take place within this week period. Okay? I believe they're the events that will take place from, let me show you, just so you know where I stand on it. I believe that Psalms 18 are the events that are going to take place from here to here. That's what I believe. And yes, I still believe La Palma is that connection, or I should say one of those connections that it will break off and that it's going to happen, I believe, in this week. The stones throw in this week. Men's hearts failing them for looking up and seeing what's coming in this portion of that final week. The bride gone by for sure by this time and the beginning of the 40 days of the Son of Man and then that will hit. All of that in this week right here. That's where I stand. Now remember, then what comes? Well, it says Psalms 19. We've taught how Psalms 19 and 119 are connected, and these are the beginning of the 40 days of the Son of Man. 
Psalms 18 are what happened to the bride or, or we'll experience and we'll, we'll see. But how much we'll experience, I don't know. Maybe none of it. Maybe we'll just see it about to take place. But then the bride will be taken. And then when we go to Psalms 19, <clears throat> we see that he tells us the day unto day under his speech. Their line is gone out through all the earth, their words unto the end of the world. Okay? This is the sun, moon, and stars. The reading of them, the seeing, the story, telling them of the season and time. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoicing as a strong man ready to run a race. His going forth is from one end of heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. There's that word circuit, the course of the sun, which begins that 21st into the 22nd of June, which is exactly the bang on date from scripture counting for the beginning of the 40 days of the Son of Man, and it's when he says the bridegroom is coming out of his chamber. Come on. Guys, we've understood these things, right? Now let me show you something. Why is this 19? Why is it Psalms 19? Right? Because when people tell us about the Psalms, they would say, well, we knew from the 80s, right? Was it uh, J.R. Church? From the 90s up to about Psalms 99, they would say there was this typology going on that it was year to year, that there was, there was events, little glimpses of Scripture that were relating to events that took place throughout somewhere in the earth. Well, they stopped at 99 because they couldn't quite equate it going in 100 forward. But what have some churches and what have some people who call themselves soldiers but but attack others what do they say they will say well 2021 said this and then nothing happens now we're in 122 and they'll find something else to make it connect but what have we shown here in this ministry we have shown that it will begin with psalms 18 slash 118 remember Remember how it said, woe is me now. That was Israel, will now say. And let the house of Aaron now say. Okay? This is the world, Israel, and this is the 144,000 who are going to be there protected, but they're going to be there during seals as well because they're not sealed till after. That's another story, though. We don't need to go there again. So we talked about Psalms 18 to 118. But then Psalms 19 to 119, uh, sorry, Psalms 19 and 119 are the beginning of the 14-year tribulation, which will end the 14 years. And then Psalms 33 and 133 are the Jubilee year Psalms that say, you know, how great it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. Well, we know that they're dwelling together in unity, just like Ezekiel 48 says, because this is when they're receiving their lands. They're, they're, they're having their jubilee year in the beginning of the millennial reign. This is why they're so happy and so excited. We have never changed a beat and in 2019 changed and then 2020 and then say 2021 and, and now we're in 2022, so it must be 2022 or 122. It has always remained the same. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because they remained the same for a reason. I'm going to share with that with you in a little bit. So remember that. Do you remember why these Psalms were the way they were? Let me see if I brought that up. Uh, there it is. Remember this with the Psalms of Ascent? I was, I was revealed through the studying of scripture that psalms 18 and 118 are part of this beginning stuff and then it's 19 119 that begins it all and it's the whole 15 year portion which goes into their their jubilee year okay we showed it all and then about a year later i was shown about the song of ascent of ascents which is the psalms of ascent you could say as well and it's 15 psalms 15 psalms that relate to the psalms of ascent but what happens 
is they would say that the Psalms of Ascent are 120 to 134. So people would say, see, see, it's, it's Psalms 120. So 120 is the time to go. Well, first of all, how would a seven-year person come to the Psalms of Ascent and ever tell you what they actually mean? How could you go to the Psalms of Ascent and have 15 chapters, yet you're going to try to relate it to me in seven years? You can't. You want to know why? Because the answer is seven and seven and the final Jubilee year. It is the 15 Psalms of Ascent. Hello. Right? We've talked about this before. But now here's the thing. Before, a year before I was shown this, I knew it wasn't 120 to 134 or 121 or whatever else the case may be. I knew that it was 119 to 133. I knew it. So when I first was reading and I came across this, I was like, oh. But then I read 119 to 133 is the reference in the Septuagint Bible. And I said, ah, there you go. It's the Septuagint that has the proper understanding of this. And who am I to say so? It's the revelation of the open books. We have it. So we were able to prove we can back exactly what the Septuagint has proclaimed that, no, it's one chapter earlier. Do you guys know who what the Septuagint is about? The Septuagint is the very first Bible translation. Look at this. The Septuagint is the very first translation of the Hebrew Bible of the Old Testament. Pretty crazy, right? Look at when it was translated. Or sorry, the Torah. The first five books of the Hebrew Bible, known as the Torah or the Pentateuch, were translated in the mid-third century B.C.E. Did you hear that? Let me say it again. The first five books of the Hebrew Bible, known as the Torah uh, or the Pentateuch, were translated in the mid-third century B.C.E. Christ hadn't even come close to coming yet. It was 400 years before the New Testament was written. Okay, and they ended up going on and it was the so it was translated from Hebrew into Greek. And of course, they continued on into the rest of those books as well. Well, what you're about to find out here today, <laughs> you're going to want to take a seat. You're going to want to make sure you're sitting down and you're prepared for what you're about to see. Because this is what gave... Rebecca finally to say clearly it's not going to be at Passover, but the Feast of Weeks is going to be the pre-trib. Now, not because it said the Feast of Weeks, but because of what it said about the rapture group. Okay? I want you to remember that. We're going to go there. So I'm laying this foundation because what you needed to understand is that Psalms 19 and this connection to it is directly connected on the date to the time exactly this year exactly this year to the circuit of the sun and what is this anniversary of the 15th of savan the four years after they came into the land making it holy unto the lord three years uncircumcised fourth year to the lord and from the fifth year forward which begins the 70 years it would be then a total of 74 years complete and on may 14th they turn of course 74. but god doesn't count when they became a nation he counts from his covenant okay he counts from the time of his covenant with man this is the end of the 74 which is the four and the 70 which is why the pendant had the 70 
in Taurus, in Savan, and then the 50 beginning. Okay? Amazing, amazing stuff. So knowing and seeing this, you know, remembering that um, that Jeremiah 4 ended, you know, this woman in travail and, and woe is me now for the, for the daughter of Zion, okay, which is the house of Israel. We know what we have also understood here from Hebrews 11. It said, by faith, you know, this is what we all pray to be is Enoch. We are looking to escape all these things as Enoch did. We are looking to be translated because we believed in God, we, that we want to please him. We believe that he's a rewarder, okay? Enoch was translated 365 years days from 622 of his birth. I mean, it doesn't get any more than, hello, guys, here's a little treat for you from the Lord, all right? By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God translated him. For before his translation, he had this, that he pleased God, but without faith. So you need faith, of course, that he is God. So without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is God, of course, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So if you have faith and you believe in him, it means you're loving him. You're, you believe that he's a rewarder and he will reward you for diligently seeking him. And what was the reward? Being taken alive, never having tasted of death and being standing before the Lord. This is for the alive group at the escape. At the escape, and now we know his birth is connected to the Feast of Weeks and his death and being 365 days as years later, which was 622. And then what happens? It's Noah. What's the relation to Noah? It's the 40 days of the Son of Man. So right after the taking at 622, at the circuit of the sun, begins the Son of Man when the Son of Man comes out from his chamber, ready to run a race, which was what? Connected to the year's end, the 40 days of Noah. And then what? Listen to this. By faith, Abraham, when he was called out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, their heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Who's going to rebuild the city and streets then the Lord who has returned on heavenly Mount Zion after the foundation is built and seals. So who is being brought back? Abraham, the, the house of Israel is going to be brought back to the land of their inheritance. To the land of their inheritance. So we know this is the rapture group. It'll be after the foundations have been built. All of these things we've taught on. Okay? Watch this. Remember in the last video, I shared that with the realization, with the, with the revelation and the understanding that it is seven Sabbaths and then numbering 50 days, understanding these counts, understanding who belongs to which portion of the three events, of the three feasts where they're to go up to the Lord. I showed that we are not spring wheat, but that the bride of Christ is the winter wheat. Okay? So if the bride of Christ is the winter wheat, I showed you why and how the Jews with their spring wheat, because it is called new wheat, they're not allowed to use it until, so they may gather it. They do gather it late summer, early fall. 
they begin to gather, but they cannot use it until the following Passover. Because that grain, that spring wheat, is called Kadosh. And Kadosh means new. You guys are going to love it. You're going to want to sit down for this one. This is part one of the two awesome revelations. This one is an actual revelation, not a difference in scripture. This is an actual revelation. This is the one that came when we were done the live show and we were chatting separately after. So what happens? Kadosh is new grain. What what else would you say new means? Younger, right? It's it's the younger grain. It's new. It's the newest one. But even though they start harvesting it in late summer, early fall, they cannot use it until the following Passover because it is new. New means younger. Oh, you guys are going to love this. I was freaking out when 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 this one came across. We were talking about things and talking about this story and it just poof, it was right there in my head. Okay. So spring wheat, we shared in the last video, is planted in the spring and it's harvested late summer, early fall. Okay, it begins to harvest, but they cannot use it. The Jews do not use it because it's called Kadosh. It is new. It is the younger grain and it cannot be used until the second day of Passover the following year. Because it's, I want you to really sink this in. You see where I'm, I'm, I'm being purposeful. Because it is new, because it is Kadosh. And I showed how the bride is actually winter wheat. Okay, let me show you on the chart. You guys are going to love this as well. Okay, so this is the chart. This is the escape of the bride of Christ. Okay, the son of man is here for 40 days in the summer of 2022. And... Then you have the tribulation, two and a half years of seals until Antichrist gets his power to continue. Three and a half years, the 42 months till the end of the sixth year of seals. The Lord comes on heavenly Mount Zion. It's about six months of the sealing of the 144. And then you see what I have? Rapture after the sixth seal about spring of 2029. I had it in the chart and I didn't even realize it. It's the literal understanding of the harvest. What was it? Planted, okay? Planted in spring, okay? But how does it work? It was planted, but what do we know happens? When the Lord comes at the end of the sixth year of seals, he's coming on heavenly Mount Zion. And they see him coming, hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. What do we know then happens in Revelation 7? We know it's about a six-month period of time where the 144,000 are sealed. And then at the last portion of it, in Revelation 7, it's the rapture of the great multitude. And I shared that that chapter, by the time the rapture comes in, is about six months later. That's what we shared in the last video. So you'll have six years, which the tribulation, after the 50 days, It will be late summer, early fall. Six years later means the Lord will be seen coming late summer, early fall. You following? Late summer, early fall of 2028. And everybody's going to be freaking out. Hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Then the 144,000 are sealed. And then by about spring of 2029, the rapture of the great multitude happens. So it's about six and a half years approximately. And we understood this, and I understood this when the graphs were done, because we know that the seventh seal is about six months, because it says about half an hour of silence in heaven. We saw that silence meant peace, because this is when the Son of Man will make peace with those nations after the Antichrist was destroyed and all those Uh, leaders over nations had their dominions taken away. So I have it right here. 
six and a half years approximately later, which would be around the spring of 2029, which would be Passover. So it's directly in line <coughs> with Kadosh. They will have seen him come, but they won't be brought in. They, they can't be used. They can't be brought in because they're new until Kadosh. I mean, I mean, until the Passover. Now, why is this so important? Because winter wheat that is planted late fall or, or early winter is harvested in late spring or early summer. This is the Feast of Weeks. Okay, that's what I was just showing you. It's late spring to early summer. And since this wheat is planted before Passover, right? Well before Passover. It's late fall, early winter. So it's planted way before Passover, meaning it starts to take root and then settles in over winter. Okay? Since winter wheat is planted before Passover and is harvested after Passover, it is always Yoshon. What does Yoshon mean? Old. Are you guys, are you guys, some of you already know because you were in that, in that uh, live show, right? Or after the conversation in it. Guys know where I'm going with this? One is younger, one is older. One is new, one is old. You're going to love this, brothers and sisters. Who do we know? Where is a story of one being younger or new and one being older or old? We have the exact answer to this story, my brothers and sisters. And it is Jacob working for his wives let's have a look at this <clears throat> ready for this uh da, 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 da. oops i'm in the wrong spot 29 okay watch this my friends where are we where are we all right let's let's start in verse 15 genesis 29 verse verse 15 and laban said unto jacob because thou art my brother Shouldest thou therefore serve me for naught? Tell me, what shall thy wages be? And Laban had two daughters. The name of the older, the name of the elder. Let me just highlight that. The name of the, no, I'm just going to highlight this. The name of the elder was Leah. And the name of the younger <clears throat> was Rachel. Do I even need to say any more? Do I need to say any more? <laughs> Just in case for those who haven't seen it yet. There is one that is new or younger. And there is one that is an elder or older. He worked. What? <coughs> Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. Remember, Christ didn't come for the Gentiles. He didn't come for the, the spirit group one. He came for who? His beautiful Rachel. He came for Rachel. That's who he wanted. It's the typology of the story of Jacob. We've been sharing that for years. Okay? So, then it says, and Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And Laban said, it is better that I give her to thee than I should give her to another man. Abide with me. <clears throat> and what happens? Jesus comes or Jacob and he works seven years expecting Rachel. And they seemed to him but a few days for the love he had for her. Remember this story? This is the story of the revelation of the end of days. See, there's no seven years of tribulation for Luke's group. This is the typology of Jesus or the spirit working so hard to get his bride that he loves so much these seven years that Jacob was to work for Rachel 
flew by like days. And what's the revelation in Luke's, in Luke's revelation of the end of days? There's really nothing about the seven years except the story. There's only a story of 50 days. Seven years that flew by and only left an equivalent time of 50 days. You see? Even though there was a period of time of seven years, even though in the creation story in the beginning, there's this gap theory mystery that seemed to be a period of time of creation that, that's very mysterious and is only in two verses, but it has the Spirit of God over the waters, like Yanni said, and the bride is what? Baptized in water to receive the Spirit. So if you're not baptized by water, you might want to do it according to Luke chapter 2, verse 38. Not according to Matthew 28. Yes, according to Acts chapter 2, verse 35, I think it is. All right, or verse 38. Okay, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and the receiving of the Holy Ghost. Okay. You can email me or send me a comment about it if you need help. If your church won't baptize you, we can we can instruct you on things there. All right. So you have this mystery of nothing because they flew by like days. And what happened after those seven flying by like days? Watch this. And Jacob said unto Laban, look at this. One verse about it. Hello. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. And Laban gathered all the men of the place and made a feast. Remember we're saying, guys, the bride might be going at the beginning of day one, and that the eighth day is maybe some other connection, okay? When he will return from the wedding, following? It says, and it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to him. And he went in unto her. And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah, Zilpah, his maid for a handmaid. And it came to pass that in the morning, it was Leah. It was Leah. Oh, no, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, what is this thou hast done unto me? Did I not serve thee for Rachel? Wherefore thou hast beguiled me. And Laban said, are you ready? This is the answer, my friends. And Laban said, it must not be, it must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Did you get that? We cannot give the new one before the older one. Did you hear that? What was it? What, what just took place? We cannot give you the spring wheat kadosh before the winter wheat yoshon. You must have the old one before you can have the new one hello hello how about that my friends how about that it is right here in the story that we've been using to reveal the 20 years the seven seven and six to the lord's return and the covenant made we've been showing that the story of jacob is the what we've been calling seven easy years right the seven easy years and he expects to get rachel but he can't get the younger one first he must get the older one first then he fulfills her wedding week and then he's given rachel for who he has to fulfill seven more years what happens after Rachel? He stays there for six more years. And at the end of those six years, which is a total of 20 years 
or in our end time, in the Mark and Matthew portion only, it will be the end of the 13 years of seals and trumpets. And what happens? The Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives and makes a covenant. And makes a covenant as Jacob did. What happened at the 20 years after 20 years of serving? Six years for the cattle. What did he do at the end of the 20 years? He makes a covenant with his father-in-law. What happens when the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives after 13 years total? He renews the covenant in one year that he had made back at the end of seals to the beginning of trumpets. That's why it says he renewed the covenant that he had made with many. All of this in perfect alignment. And we just found out, knowing for a long time that the bride of Christ is the Leah, the one that he did want because he was coming for what? The house of Israel. He was coming for the house of Israel, but he got the Gentile bride. He got the older one before the younger one. And the older one is winter wheat. It is the older one who is called Yoshon. It is the new one or the younger one, which is to be held after the six years and wait for another six months before she can be used. Oh my goodness. I told you I was going to tell you. I, I told you guys to sit down. I told you guys to take a deep breath because this was going to knock your socks off. This is the undeniable evidence. This is undeniable proof. Biblical proof. Actual, actual wheat harvest understanding revealed. That the bride of Christ is gone at the time of the feast of weeks of the first fruits of the wheat harvest. At the time of the feast of ingathering to be observed at the year's end, just as Enoch was. Which means the revelation of the rapture of the great multitude is indeed at Passover when the new grain can finally be observed the following year after it was harvest time to be observed or used at the second day of Passover, which means exactly as the imagery has had it, the bride goes as the old wheat first, the winter wheat. It doesn't mean stale, by the way, when you read about it, for those thinking that. And then what? Six years later to the end of seals, they see the Lord coming. They don't go right away because there was no sign given to them, but they will have seen it. Then the 144 are sealed. And then the rapture of the great multitude around the spring of 2029, which is Passover time of 2029, the great multitude rapture at Passover will be taken to paradise, which we know is Mount Zion that has come down and the Lord is gathering them all there. Now, who is this that the Lord is gathering? Who is this representation of all those that the Lord is gathering. We covered them in Jeremiah 4, right? The ones that said, woe is me now. <laughs> the one in travail. Uh, the one bringing forth child. The voice of the daughter of Zion. Right? This is, this is Joseph from, Hosea, uh, from uh, Hebrews 11. This is the what? This is all related to the rapture of the great multitude. That will at Passover be brought in. Watch this. Remember I was telling you the Psalms of Ascent. And this is how we began to hear in this ministry about the Septuagint. Oh, sure. Many of you, I'm sure, have heard it over the years. But to understand when it was written and, and its relevance, which means the very first writing from Hebrew into any other language was this Septuagint, the very first one, okay? This is what we were talking about here with the Septuagint. Now, I hope you're sitting down because 
Remember, we were just sharing in Jeremiah 4 who they were. We've been sharing that it's this Joseph group, that it, all of this relates to the great multitude. If you watched uh, the live show we did over with Mike over on 165 and, and the rest of them uh, the other day, we shared about uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 31 as well. Well, it was a perfect setup because Jeremiah chapter 31 was what I had started to tell them about on, on before going live. I didn't want to say it to everybody, but we've taught on Jeremiah 31 as well for two to three years. And every time I was teaching you about Jeremiah 31, I've explained to you that in verse eight, listen to what it says. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coasts of the earth. And with them, the blind and the lame, listen to this, the woman with child and her that travaileth with child together, a great company shall return thither. You remember that? This is that group that was in tears and crying and freaking out saying, oh no, now it's our turn. And who are they? Let's go back to the beginning. At that time, saith the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus saith the Lord, the people which are left of the sword. Hello. Found grace in the wilderness. Mid seals, hello. Even Israel, when I causeth him to rest. Verse 4, Jeremiah 31, 4. Again, I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with tabrets, and shall go forth in the dances of them that make merry. Verse 6. For there shall be a day that the watchmen upon Mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye, and let us go up to Zion. Ephraim. Remember, Ephraim was one of the seals workers I told you? The day will come when he's going to now say, Hey, it's time to go up to Zion. It's time to be gathered. Get ready. Have a seat. If you're driving, pull to the side of the road. Arise ye, and let us go up to Zion. Unto the Lord our God. When does Zion come? Of course, we know at the end of the sixth seal, they're going to see it coming. For thus saith the Lord God, sing with gladness for Jacob and shout among the chief of the nations. Publish ye, praise ye, saith the Lord. Save thy people, the remnant of Israel. All of those after the sword, they were living in the wilderness. Hello. This is all a portion of seals. And now Mount Zion has come down and he's about to gather them all back and listen to what it says. I'll read it again. Behold, verse eight, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coasts of the earth. And with them, I will, uh, and with them, the blind and the lame, the woman with child and her that travail with child together, a great company. Remember these teachings in the past? I said, see, together a great multitude. This is the rapture of the great multitude, and I've shared it many times. Let's read a little bit more, and then we're going to come back to verse 8. They shall come with weeping and with supplications. Will I lead them? I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in the straight way, wherein thou shalt not stumble. For I am the father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O you nations, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather, will gather him to keep him as a shepherd does his flock. Therefore, verse 12, therefore, they shall come and sing in the height of Zion. Hello. Isn't that what happens when they're in Zion? In the height of the mountain with the Lord, singing. 
and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord for wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and of the herd. <laughs> for the what? For the young of the flock and of the herd. And their soul shall be as a watered garden. Why? Because they're going to be in Mount Zion, the Garden of Eden, paradise. And they shall not sorrow any more at all. Let me, let me see if this makes sense to you. Let's go to Revelation chapter 7. What does it say about the rapture group that comes in? A great multitude. What happens with this group? Watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this. Do, 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 do. They shall no more thirst. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and he shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and shall wipe away all their tears from their eyes. Guys, I've been showing you this is the rapture of the great multitude. Okay? Uh, uh, da, 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 where was I? Okay, and they shall rejoice from their sorrow. Remember this one? This one we talked about a lot as well. Verse 15 on. Thus saith the Lord, a voice heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping, Rachel weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. Why were they not? Because this great multitude rapture is the house of Israel. They are not Rachel's children, which is the house of Judah. Thus saith the Lord, he's telling her now, refrain thy voice from weeping and thine eyes from tears, for thy work shall be rewarded, saith the Lord. They shall come again from the land of their enemy. And their hope is in thine end, saith the Lord, that thy children shall come again to their own border. Rachel's there, his wife, but not her children. Not her children, which is the house of Judah. Which means, just as we have been proclaiming for close to three years, this piece of scripture right here is clearly about the rapture of the great multitude is clearly this joseph group will they'll be gathered from the corners of the earth and if you guys remember this remember this what happens what are the jews waiting for what is what's the what's israel waiting for they know that the messianic era will be ushered in by a jewish leader generally referred to as messiah hebrew for the anointed one a righteous zion of king david he will rebuild the holy temple in jerusalem and gather the jewish people from all corners of the earth and return them to the promised land now they say all the jewish people but israelites right and will gather them from the four corners of the earth from all corners of the earth and bring them back into the land it's exactly with the great multitude rapture of jeremiah 31 8. now you're saying yes alan I've been following you for a while. I know that this is what it says. I know clearly this is the rapture group. We know why Rachel's crying and, and why Rachel's people haven't come in yet. We understand all this. So why are you so excited? Why do I have to take a seat with that excitement like Rachel and Leah and Jacob, which was so exciting? Why, why do I have to sit here? Well, let's not forget who was part of this Rachel. So these are what? Leah's kids coming in, right? The great multitude of Leah's kids, which is the house of Israel. This is the great multitude. It's that continuation, which is six years later, but we know that they won't be able to be observed, you see, until this other portion comes. And it's what? New that can't be observed until Passover, which means this must be Passover. And Christ, as we said in the last video, and Christ who died for the world came for the house of Israel 
and died at passover died and resurrected to save us all but specifically he came for the house of israel of which the gentiles got grafted into of course the sleeping church so we've got another brother out there <coughs> who's saying the rapture is coming at passover he's absolutely right but not pre-trib mid-trib six and a half years from late summer early fall this year the rapture of the great company multitude of the house of israel will be brought in at passover how do i know this is passover this is where you're going to want to sit down i shared it three years ago and i had completely forgotten about it since are you ready are you sitting down jeremiah 31 verse 8 we're going to go into the septuagint as we revealed the septuagint's proper connection in the psalms we're going to now look at the septuagint version of jeremiah chapter 31 verse 8. i hope you're sitting down because you're going to be picking up your jaw this is when our sister rebecca saw this in that video of parable of the vineyard regardless of what parable of the vineyard was talking about because he doesn't understand the gospels in the 14 years that have been revealed she knew that when she saw this that the rapture at passover was not for the bride but was for the great multitude of revelation chapter 7. are you ready watch this okay i'm on bible hub watch this there's the king james version right behold i will bring them from a far country from the north country and gather them from the coasts of the earth just as they're expecting right and with them the blind and the lame the woman with child and her that travailed with child together a great company shall return thither are you ready for the original very first translation ever recorded of that scripture are you ready for this are you ready i hope so because you're about to pick up your jaw here it is the brenton septuagint translation jeremiah 31 verse 8 here it comes behold i bring them from the north and will gather them from the end of the earth to the feast of passover and the people shall be a great multitude and they shall return to their what <laughs> i just did the last video proving that the great multitude rapture was going to be at passover and the revelation was the wheat from winter to spring and proving that how the jews observe it is a direct correlation to the difference between the bride going and when the seals are over and in that sixth year it'll be about six months later when they're brought in which proved that revelation chapter seven let me let me let me help you in case you still haven't seen it when the six years when the six years of seals one two three seals four five six seals it doesn't mean it's one one year one the next year one the next year that's not what it is but by the time the six seals are over it will have been six years and at the end of the sixth year of seals you see and said unto the mountains unto the rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him uh that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand the six years of seals have come to an end and when you get to revelation chapter 7 the seventh year you see the 144,000 sealed first and then what do you see the great multitude which no man can number the house of israel being brought in this great multitude just as jeremiah 
31 verse 8 said it was a great company which means a great multitude and the original translation told us it would be at the feast of passover boom how are you going to sleep now oh you might have been excited for potential passover and i may have just crushed your neat dream with this understanding but guess what now you could be excited because now you know where it is you know that the bride is going at the time of the feast of weeks there's no more guessing game there are three great feasts of the lord for which things are brought which the people are to come not empty-handed they are passover the feast of weeks and tabernacles but it wasn't the order the order starts with the beginning and the beginning is the ox remember the beginning is aleph the beginning the leader in the beginning aleph the bull the head of the bull the ox wow wow remember that it's the same group from second esdras remember that look at what it said this is the escape deliverer bewilderment everybody freaking out neighbor against neighbor war breaks out then all of those other things take place then the son of man is revealed and another group an innumerable multitude want to come and fight against them thinking they can conquer them and then what then he shall stand on mount zion zion will come to be made manifest to all people prepared and built this is the rapture group this is where they're going to be taken to mount zion the mountain carved without hand the place where their mansions are prepared for them and then look at what it says verse 39 and as for you seeing him gather to himself another multitude that was peaceable these are the ten tribes which were led away from their own country into the captivity in the days of king hosea which is what the house of israel the gentile side whom shulam answer the king of the assyrians led captive remember what it said whom shulam answer the king of assyrians led captive you want to know what that answer is did you did you see what it said first of all in jeremiah 31 he said he was going to bring them in from where watch this he said he would bring them in he would gather them from the north and from all the coasts of the earth jeremiah chapter 4 said that the first one coming to attack that would be this first attack from Jer- on jerusalem would be from the north who is the one coming from the north the lion who is the lion the lion <coughs> is the assyrian who is the assyrian assad from the north remember his last name used to mean beast and his great his grandfather or his father changed it for their political purposes and changed it so that bashar al-assad means lion who is coming from the north who is going to take captives and prisoners from the north and captivity from all corners of the earth as well are you following are you seeing how incredible this is i mean guys you see in the beginning was the word just like genesis in the beginning this was the spirit of god in the beginning this was christ in the beginning then he was made light john bared witness of that light this is when christ then made the group of creation in the days of genesis 1. the beginning was the spirit realm this is the one that the spirit was over that flew by like days the light is when christ became light and it was over those creation that he made in the days 
and the false light lucifer corrupted with his guys when the stone was rejected you see and that was that group within the creation of days and then we have and the word was made flesh now we know christ isn't adam but christ is a type of adam just as we read in first corinthians 15 right that the first adam was a living soul and the last adam christ was made a quickening spirit you see because adam wasn't born he was formed right so christ still had to come and be made flesh but even in the typology adam was made flesh made with the dust of the earth so we know christ is also the typology of the first Adam and the last Adam, to the last Adam. Guys, I just, I keep thinking, oh man, I could just keep going on and on. You guys know how it works for me, man. I think maybe I'll, I'll end it there because, oh, you know what? Let me finish it with this. I'll be real quick, just a few more minutes. So, and the reason I want to do this is because we've now clearly shown to you the pre as the bride of Christ at the Feast of Weeks. We've shown the difference between the old and the new and the reason why. We've shown it's the difference between the two harvests and the two women, the two brides. We, we've shown the difference in the groups and their portions of time, when and where. And the final one, as we know, is, of course, tabernacles. So this is when Mark, you know, we talked about after six days, like after six years of seals, they will have seen him come, but they don't know when they get to go, right? We shared that. Well. Now I'm going to share with you Zechariah chapter 14. Because if you remember in Zechariah chapter 14, watch this. In Zechariah chapter 14, Zechariah is written to the Jews. And 14 years, like 14 chapters, we know that the Lord returns at the beginning of the 14th year, the beginning of the seventh year of trumpets, okay? The beginning of the 14th year of, of tribulation. So you can say the end of the sixth year of trumpets or the beginning of the seventh, right? Same thing. And what do we see? This is where the Lord returns, feet down on the Mount of Olives. Uh, They're going to bring a destruction against them. But what ends up happening? It says, and it shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and in winter shall it be. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day, there shall be one Lord and his name one. And talks about lifting up the place and the destruction that's going to come first over all those who came against Jerusalem when Satan was released, right? This is where Satan is bound. Everybody else is destroyed. And then what? Listen to this. Verse 16 of Zechariah 14. It shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and year, sorry, uh, uh, from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso will not keep Uh, sorry, will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. How fitting do you think that is, brothers and sisters? Then at the time of Zechariah 14, of the Lord returning feet down in the Mount of, on the Mount of Olives, which we know is late summer to early fall, when he returns feet down on the Mount of Olives, He brings about the destruction 
the rebuilding and settling of the temple. He will renew everything and the waters will go out towards the end of that year. And everybody is going to be what? All the leaders of the families of the earth will be having to come and keep the Feast of Tabernacles every year from that time forward during the millennial reign. Do you understand what's being said? Do you understand the timing of what's being said? Let's go back as I put this to an end and we go to Deuteronomy 16 where we started it all. There's the Feast of Passover, seven days as seven years of seals. When are they taken? When are they brought? The great multitude after the affliction of seals in the seventh year is brought in at the rapture. The Feast of Weeks is a free will offering of thy hand on the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, one day. And the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Booths is seven days. Just as we are showing, what is the Feast of Booth? It is the Feast of Tabernacles, which is the final seven. So there we just showed seven and seven. Zechariah seven and seven, chapter 14. The Lord has returned, and from that day forward, every year at the Feast of Booths, they shall come from all nations and worship the Lord God. It's right here in the revelation, guys, of the three times to the Lord. The only difference is it's not in the order we thought it was. Because the beginning is the Spirit. The beginning is the Holy Ghost. The beginning is the Spirit and the water. The beginning is the ox. The beginning is the ox which is the son of man in the beginning then seven for passover and seven for trumpets to booths brothers and sisters i pray this has blessed you as it has blessed me it has gotten me so uh, i don't even know what to say to, to understand these things, to be able to take them through scripture the way we're able to do it and to reveal every part and piece connected through all the teachings that we've been doing over all of these years, it has never skipped a beat. We have never deviated or, or turned away because somebody came against us. Because once you see it and once you understand it, you will never ever in all of your life see it differently again it is virtually impossible i love you guys god bless you god bless your families i love you so much talk to you soon bye for now